I'm Britt Flanagan. Uh, no, I've met some of you and spoken with some of you, emailed some of you, so appreciate you coming tonight. I don't know if anyone joined in any of the sessions that I had last week in preparation for advising. If you did, raise your hand. I'm just curious because I do recognize some names. I think some of you may have. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started. So the main things when you are preparing to register. So first off, you want to schedule an appointment with your advisor, OK? Not all of you are my advisees. If you are, then you can schedule an appointment through Starfish between October 17th and November 3rd. I have specific um, sessions for an hour and a half where we're going to do small group advising sessions. And that will give you time to really create some schedules in your schedule hero, ask any questions that you have remaining even after this session for what courses you should be taking in the spring. If you don't need the full hour and a half, that's fine. Um, but we're going to give you that time to um, reduce your anxiety when you go in to register that night late at 12.01 a.m. So um, that can be stressful sometimes if a section closes that you for a course that you wanted to get. So we're going to talk about some strategies for making sure that you don't have that stress. OK, so to sign up for tutoring, you're going to go on to your you're going to log into your Starfish account. If you don't know where to go when you're on Canvas and you're um, on your dashboard, you click on account and then click on Starfish. OK, when you get to Starfish, you'll find My Success Network. Click on My Success Network. And whoever you are assigned to for advising will be under your connections. OK, you can find that individual and you'll find you'll click on schedule then dates will um, be highlighted where there are spots open. Like I said, for my advising sessions in particular, anywhere from October 17th to November 3rd, you will see some individual appointments between now and November, October 14th, but those are very short sessions where I'm meeting with some of the upperclassmen who are applying to the nursing program this year. So if you accidentally sign up for one of those appointments, I'll just send you an email and remind you to sign up for one of the small group sessions. All right, in preparing for advising, you want to bring some potential schedules that you're thinking about taking. So if you're confused about how to create these schedules, like I said, you'll have plenty of time to do that in the session. But it would be nice if you had um, worked on it a little bit before you actually come to your appointment. So first off, you need to know what classes to take, right? What classes you should be signed, registering for. So under the Canvas page, which all of you should be on, if you're not on there, please send me an email now. Under files, this is where you're going to find all of the nursing information. And most importantly, the plan of study for students who are pursuing the nursing major, who are interested in nursing. You've all seen this at SOAR. We also handed these out when you came in for the second day to register for classes. There's, uh, there are four semesters that you're planning for in working towards the nursing major. As we've discussed before, we want you to take semester by semester. So when you're, when you're working to get into the nursing program, the only thing you really have control of is the classes that you're in now, what you're taking, and creating study strategies 
for doing well in those classes. Figuring out still, you know, the transition from high school to college, some things that maybe you might want to um, work on the rest of this semester so that next semester when you're taking anatomy, you've kind of figured out some strategies that work for you and connecting with resources on campus. Those are all really important. So in the nursing major, we always say, focus on this semester and then plan for the next semester, okay? When you're looking at your spring semester schedule, all of you should be taking principles of biology. So bio 111 with the 111 lab. That course is a prerequisite. It's a required course in order for you to be able to take any of the upper level biology courses. Those are anatomy, physiology, and microbiology. All of these courses which are required in the nursing program. You'll see on the plan of study, some of these courses are, have an asterisk and are highlighted. And I mean, in bold. <coughs> Any of the courses in bold, you have to have completed in order to apply to the nursing program. We'll talk more specifically if you weren't in the degree work session every time we meet about the timeline for applying to the program. So right now, what we wanna focus on is what courses you wanna take in the spring semester. To stay, track on, to stay on track for science, you wanna take either anatomy with the anatomy lab, or you also have the option to take physiology with the physiology lab. If you did not take Chem 103 this fall semester, some of you may have started with one science course. Then you need to make sure you're registering for Chem 103 in the spring. The nursing program requires one chemistry lab. So if you're taking a chemistry lab this fall semester, you do not need, this semester, you do not need to take another chemistry lab. You can go on to the second level of chemistry, which is Chem 104. If you're starting Chem 103 in the spring, you can choose to take Chem 110 with 103 in the spring, or you can take it with 104 in the fall semester. If you are going to take Chem 110 lab in the spring semester, then we suggest only registering for two more classes on top of your other science courses. Something to note though, the Chem 110 lab, the, um, what you're learning in Chem 103 matches with what you are going to be doing in the Chem 110 lab. Okay, so the same material that's covered in Chem 103, that's the type of experiments that you're gonna be performing in the Chem 110 lab. But like I said, you can take the 110 lab in the fall semester with Chem 104. Back to the spring semester. Some of you may have taken sociology this semester. Some may be taking psychology. Some of you might have already been taking the Human Development HDF 111. Those courses you can move around. If you have sociology, psychology, and HDF 111, so this lifespan development course, you can tag in another course that's required for nursing. So philosophy 121 or 220, those are ethics classes, so you're learning about different ethical issues in society or medical ethics in particular for philosophy 220. So you can move some of those around. The main thing that's important is that you stay on track with your science courses. When you apply to the program, the admissions committee wants to see most of your science courses completed. You can have one in progress when you apply to the program in the spring semester of your sophomore year, okay? Not everybody will be taking microbiology spring semester. You can take either anatomy or physiology, 
this spring. Then once you take one of those classes, you can actually take microbiology next fall semester of your sophomore year. So we can talk more specifically about that during your advising session. We don't recommend that you go and take five courses for the nursing program in the spring, okay? Mix them up with your general education requirements. If you came in with a lot of gen eds that you've completed already, if you've already taken English 101, if you have your foundations course completed, then yes, you could add a, another nursing course here. That would be fine if you took psychology and sociology. If you have a lot of space in your schedule, remember when you're pursuing the nursing major, you're always looking at a plan B. What is your backup major? What's your backup plan? Is it to apply to other nursing programs? That's a specific conversation you need to have with your advisor. There are many different um, general educate different courses that you can take for these requirements. So if you're looking for a course for your oral communication class, you don't have to take CST 105. You can look up other classes that will meet that requirement. Same with English 101. There are many other classes that meet the written communication requirement. An example is um, FMS 115. And I'll show you how to um, look up those classes. But you need to use this plan of study as your resource for what courses you should be taking in the spring semester. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead into, so for you to get to your schedule hero, you can go to the iSpartan icon and just click right on UNCG, well, you can click right on schedule hero, okay? I'm gonna go in another way to log specifically into my account. So one thing I tell my students, first you're gonna to go to spring 2023, then create some filters up here. There's no reason to be looking, to be searching for classes that have a wait list or are full, okay? We don't wanna generate schedules for those. We want you to have a full schedule after, um, at 12.15 a.m. when you register for your classes, okay? Most of the classes you're, um, going to be registering for in the spring, don't even have a wait list option. So don't get on a wait list at this point. For all parts of term selected, I suggest to all students to just click on full term. You don't wanna accidentally register for a class that is in a mini semester. So if you accidentally register for an intro to communication studies course that's taught in seven and a half weeks, and you're trying to focus on anatomy, well, then you've got all this work you've got to do for this one class. So just spread, take full semester classes. Winter term session, there's no reason for a freshman to be taking a winter term session at this point. You worked hard this semester, enjoy your winter break. If for some reason you do, talk to your advisor about that, okay? Go ahead and click full term. If you're wanting to just take face-to-face -face classes, see what options those are first, then you can just cl click on face-to-face. -face. So I'm gonna do that for the purposes of today. Then you go to plan courses and you start adding the classes that you need to register for. So anatomy, you must take the lab with the lecture. We're gonna go by the plan of study and do anatomy, chemistry, psychology. So under categories and attributes, 
if you want to look up other courses besides English 101 that meet MAC written communication, you can look under subject. So there are several. Um, really, at your level, I would choose either 101 or 102. But if you click on this, then you can read a course description. If you've already taken FMS 115, then you have your written communication requirement. You don't need English 101. You don't want to take both. Um, other ones, so that's about it for written communication. So that's how you would look up other classes that meet those general education requirements. So let's go ahead and just add some to our list again, based on that plan of study, which again, you do have options, okay? You don't have to follow it to every, you don't have to follow every detail on there. So now you have your plan courses and you generate schedules and you're gonna get over a thousand. So here's where you, the work comes for you. When you wanna, reduce the number of schedules that you're looking at. First, you can go into anatomy and you see that there's one section. So that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10. You know that's when anatomy is going to be. Chem 104, let's say you don't wanna do the Tuesday, Thursday at eight o'clock class. So go ahead and uncheck that and then just check off the Tuesday, Thursday at 12.30 class. Then um, CST 105, you can open it up, see when other options are. So I'm going to say, you know what, I have the Chem 103, Chem 104 class Tuesday, Thursday at 1230. So let me check off a couple options on Tuesday, Thursday morning that might work. Then English 101, we're just going to leave that open and just see what options we have for that class so we can see what kinds of schedules might be available. So now you generate schedules and you have 407. You don't want 407 either, but you can go ahead and start viewing some schedules to see what looks good. So you can click through all 407 if you want, or you can minimize it the way I was showing you. So here, you've got a lot of schedules, on, a lot of courses on Tuesday, Thursday. You don't want a lot of schedules on Tuesday, Thursday. So let's go ahead and find psychology class that's on Monday, Wednesday, and check that off. Now you generate schedules and you have 40. So that right there changes the number. Let's just say you like this schedule. You know, you may not like three um, classes in one day and then a late afternoon lab, but you're going to find schedules that you like. So the reason that I'm showing you how to do this is because here you can save to your favorites. Let's find another schedule that looks exactly the same. So let's see here, that splits up the Tuesday, Thursday a little bit, gives you a Monday, Wednesday, Friday English. So now you have another favorite schedule. You can name it whatever you want to. You can say um, favorite anatomy schedule. So the point is, instead of having 40 schedules to scroll through, you're gonna find a good amount. I tell my students to have about six. And now when you go back, you can just look at the favorite schedules. So you can keep an eye on these. You can go ahead and create your schedules, but then over the next week before you actually register for classes, you can go in to view your schedule, see how many seats are remaining in each section. If you need to make changes or figure out a different plan, then you create some new schedules. There's no reason to send a schedule to your shopping cart at this point. Because if you send these classes to your shopping cart, 
you can't create any more schedules. You can't generate more schedules. You'll have to go into your shopping cart and remove them all. So let's say I send these to my shopping cart. Now I wanna try to create some new schedules. So I go in here, generate schedules, and it says that these are all checked in my shopping cart so I can no longer generate new options. You're not gonna be able to, you're not gonna register for classes any earlier or have a better chance of getting into classes earlier than other students by putting them in your shopping cart. So again, that's why I tell students to create some favorite schedules that you like that are going to work for you because some of you might be registering on the very last day. So you need to have some options. Um, now, you can do this the weekend before you register for classes. That's fine um, when you have a better idea of what's available. So is anatomy going to close the lecture? Probably not. But this particular lab might fill up. So when that happens, you have to find another lab. Same thing with this intro to communication studies or these courses that have you know, 20 to 30 seats in them. Those might fill up. So you want to have other options and go into your schedule hero before you go in at 12 o'clock and have some good concrete schedules that are going to work for you that you can register for. Let's say you get a lab at a time and you really don't want it and you don't love your schedule. Um, but that's the only one that's working for you that night. Remember that you can drop and add classes all the way through the first week of spring classes, of the spring semester. Okay, so around January 12th or 13th or something like that. I don't know the specific date right now. So your goal is to make sure you have courses that you need for your major and um, that you have a full schedule going forward. Because again, like I said, you can make changes to your schedule. Does anybody have any questions right now? If you came to Degree Works last week, you heard a lot of this already. Um, but, you know, it still helps to hear it again. Anybody have questions about the courses that they should be registering for in the spring? Um, when you go, oh, go ahead. I have a question. So I took my English this semester. What class would go into that place for next semester? So um, so an option there. If you've taken English 101 and um, you have psychology and sociology, did you take both of those classes? No, I haven't took any of those. Did you take the FYE course? Yes. Okay. So an option could be either anatomy or physiology. Then if you took chemistry, Chem 104, then you could take psychology and sociology, or you could take psychology and lifespan development. If there's a course that meets like your diversity and equity, you could go ahead and take that. You do have room in your schedule. You don't have to stay on this track right here, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Anybody else? What classes count as like general education? So anything that says MAC here, um, a lot of your nursing classes are meeting general education requirements. So like Bio 111 is meeting your critical thinking for natural science. Psychology is meeting your social behavioral. Nutrition is gonna meet your health and wellness. So if you're taking FYE right now, it's meeting your foundations requirement. Some of you might be taking HHS 150 or another course. 
So if you have you one thing definitely that you want to do is you want to look at your degree works also. Um, if you're confused on Mac, you can also go and look at this BSN info sheet. And these are the um, these are the MAC requirements, which are the general education courses you need in order to, you need to, the general education requirements you need to meet in order to graduate. So technically, to apply to the nursing program, these are the courses you need, okay? Many of these courses meet these requirements. Does that make sense? There are five additional requirements that you need to meet to check off all 11 of these when you're pursuing nursing specifically. Those are a course for your foundations requirement, a course for written communication, oral communication, global and intercultural, and diversity and equity. So beside the other ones, you'll see like for quantitative reasoning, you have to take statistics that's required to apply to the nursing major. So you don't need to take college algebra to meet this requirement. So general education requirements and MAC, that it's kind of one and it's one in the same, okay? They're all requirements though. So like sometimes students will ask me, um, about electives. So I don't really consider English 101 an elective. I would consider an elective a course that maybe you were just taking for fun because you had room in your schedule and you it was something that you were interested in and it didn't really apply to your major. So even though you don't need English 101 in order to apply to the program, if you haven't taken it by the time you finish the nursing program, you won't be able to graduate because it is a requirement to graduate with a four-year degree. Does that make sense? I hope I didn't confuse y'all with that because you do yep. need, yeah. okay, if I confused anyone, you can send me an email and we can discuss it. But um, this looks a lot like your degree works. So these are all the courses that are going to be at the top of your degree works as a pre-health studies major. I mean, all the requirements, not court, they're not all the courses. But then these are all the courses listed at the bottom of your degree works when you do the what if I was a nursing major. These are the related area requirements. You have to scroll all the way down after you do your what if analysis, which I know all of you have done, right? Yes. And those are the courses that you need, um, the ones listed here on the left actually. Um, Bio 111 isn't listed there, but you have to take it in order to take the upper level biology courses. That is another thing that you'll definitely do when you go into advising. You'll pull up your degree works. You'll do the what if analysis. You have plenty of time to prepare for this. The main thing you need to do right now is schedule your appointment. Go ahead and schedule your appointment with your advisor. For me, like I said, those start October 17th. Megan Caton is the advisor for um, many of you who are also pursuing nursing, her advising appointments will start October 12th. She has some listed in there, but those are kind of for students who have other issues right now, but advising spring registration, peak advising starts October 12th when you get back from fall break. So that's the best time to schedule with her. Most of you are going to be registering Either, I'm trying to pull this over, around November 7th, November 8th. So if you didn't bring any credit in, you're registering November 8th. 
if you brought even one some credit in, then you would be registering November 7th. So in looking at the schedule, you're on November 7th, if your window opens the 7th, then on Sunday, November 6th, 6, that evening, go in, make sure your courses, your schedule looks good in Schedule Hero. And around 11 p.m. that night, you can go ahead and send it to your shopping cart. And that's when, and then at 12.01 a.m., that's when you'll click register. You'll put in your advising code, which you'll get from your advisor at your appointment, and you'll register. Another thing you need to make sure that you um, will definitely go th over this, but if you have a different advisor, ask him or her to help you check your um, registration status. So you wanna make sure that you don't have any holds on your account. You don't wanna go in that evening and find out that you have um, a bill from Student Health Services. I'm not sure that they put holds on your account for that anymore, but like I said, you just don't want any holds on your account and that's where you can check to make sure so that you're able to register that night. Any other questions? Um, I have a question about making an appointment with you specifically. Um, mm -hmm. Since you said our appointments are going to start being able to sign up like in October 7th, on October 17th, um, when I'm looking on Starfish, they say they're in like group sessions. So will it be with more than one person when we like try to talk about our schedules? Yes. So the reason I do that is because I feel like you guys really learn from each other and I want y'all to make those connections and allows you more time to spend rather than me doing really quick 30 minute sessions. Um, and that way you can really work on your schedules and have a good plan. It's just five at the most who will be in there. So I feel like you're going to get a lot more individual attention. You'll all bring your laptops. You're going to work off your own laptop for that time. If you have something specific you need to talk about individually, then we can schedule something later, um, maybe after that session. So I do have time on my schedule for things like that, but you just need to email me directly about that. I just have to have some individual appointments for some of my upperclassmen right now. Um, and also, like, if some of the times don't work for us, could we, like, email you to see if we can? Because my schedule doesn't end till, like, 4 o'clock. And, like, I see that your sessions are from, like, 3.30 to 5, the latest on some days. So okay. I'm not so, sure. Okay. Well, just email me. I'll look at your schedule to see. Um, what maybe I can find that might work for you, even if you're only able to come for an hour. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Another thing you can have your advisor do if you wanted to um, have them check your schedule ahead of time before your appointment. Um, you could let them know that you have some schedules in Schedule Hero. Could they check it out for you? That, and if they have time, <laughs> I'm not saying everybody can do that because you will see our schedules and they're all very full. Peak advising is a very busy time of year. Um, so that, is, that could be an option though, where they could go in, check it out. Everything looks good and give you um, the thumbs up. All right. All right, well, thanks for coming. You can always email me with individual questions if you think of something later. Otherwise, I will see you at advising. Bye.